Hello all. Let us now focus on pre-Romanesque art circa 800 to 1100. As in the other chapters, you shall be learning the chapter with the following objectives. Acquire the basic vocabulary, concepts and criteria for understanding, interpreting and analyzing Romanesque art. Encounter significant works of the period and enable them to study later works influenced by this period. Understand and appreciate the role of values, beliefs, ideas in shaping the art of the times. The broad aspects that we are going to focus on are as follows. After introducing you to the topic I shall explain to you the importance of pilgrimage and religious architecture that meant to cater to those times. We shall look at St. Martindu Canago, St. James Cathedral, Santiago de Compostela Glacia, Northwest Spain, at Sante Foy Conway in terms of religious architecture. We shall also look at secular architecture and some examples will follow. Europe at the beginning of the 11th century was divided into many small political and economic units ruled by powerful families such as in Germany the term Romanesque Roman-like refers to a broad range of styles. Embracing the regional variants that flourished in Western Europe in the 11th and 12th centuries. It is a stylistic rather than a historical term intended to describe medieval art that shares with ancient Roman architecture such features as round arches, stone walls, thick walls, and exterior relief sculpture. Romanesque art was also greatly influenced by Byzantine art, especially in painting, and by the anti-classical energy of the decoration of the insular art of the British Isles. And from these elements forged a highly innovative and coherent style. After the acquisition of holy relics and crusaders stimulated further construction of new arches across Europe in the fully fledged Romanesque style of architecture, also called Norman architecture in Britain and Ireland. The new architecture produced a huge demand for decorative religious art, including sculpture, stained glass, and other artworks. By the 12th century, certain architects and sculptors were the most sought after by patrons, both religious and secular. Although towns and cities with artisans and merchants grew in importance, Europe was still an agricultural society and land was primarily source of wealth and power. As in the case with feudalism, there was not any centralized political order and the Pope was the main unifying authority. The church played a vital role in secular life, owning a large amount of landed property close to a third in France and claiming the same temporal authority at the kings and nobles. Now, pilgrimages and crusades became the two new cultural forces encouraged by the church. New orders were founded such as the Cistercian Cluniac Cistercian Cluniac and Carthusian, and monasteries 
also held the same importance as earlier and were still the seat of European culture despite the fact that universities were established in Bologna, Paris, Oxford and Cambridge. Pilgrimages to the holy places of Christian Dom, Jerusalem, Rome, churches with sacred relics and Santiago de Compostana, Galicia, Northeast Spain, the shrine of St. James, the first martyr apostle, the center of Christian resistance to the Muslim occupation of Spain. Pilgrims from all over Europe followed four main routes across France to the Paranis and then westward of Copstella. An extensive network of churches, hospices, lodging places and monasteries was constructed. The ever-growing number of pilgrims influenced their design and location. Now we discuss architecture. This was a period of great building activity in Christian Europe. In Romanesque religious architecture, practical considerations were gradually superseded by aesthetic. From the outwardly simple meeting house of the Christian Basilica, the church, even in its external aspect, became a majestic monument. Churches now had to be structurally sound and adequately illuminated. Although timber remained common in construction, Romanesque builders used stone masonry whenever possible. Masonry walls were now stronger and more durable and they enhanced the acoustical effect of the Gregorian chants. At stone replaced timber, replacing the risk of fire. Romanesque churches characteristically incorporated semicircular arches for windows, doors, and arcades, barrel or groin walls to support the roof of the nave, massive piers and walls with few windows to contain the outward thrust of the walls, side aisles with galleries above them, a large tower over the crossing of the nave and transept, and smaller towers at the church's western end. French churches commonly expanded on the early Christian basilica plain, incorporating radiating chapels to accommodate more priests, ambulatories around the century apse for visiting pilgrims and large transepts between the century and nave. Adapting the plan, the Roman basilica with a nave, lateral aisles and apse, the churches now typically had a transept crossing the nave and the churches on the pilgrimage road included an ambulatory, a gallery along the faithful to walk around the sanctuary, and the series of radiating chapels for several priests to say mass concurrently. Some important features of a Romanist structure are thick and large walls supporting stone roofs, relatively simple design but bulky. Similarly, an external and interior appearance, small windows to avoid weakening of walls, walls, large windows with stained glass, tall recessed porches rising to a high peak 
and providing ample surfaces for sculpture and the so-called flying buttresses. Let us now talk about St. Martendu Kanigao. First Romanesque structure, St. Martendu Kanigao was patronized by the local Count Guifred. The complex is capped by a massive stone tower sitting next to the century of the two-story church. St. James Cathedral, Santiago, the Compostola, Glacia, Northwest Spain. Typically Spanish in its expensive appearance, pilgrims entered the church through the large double doors at the ends of transepts rather than through the western portal, which served ceremonial processions. In its own time, Santiago was admired for the excellence of its construction. Not a single track to be found. The cathedral had no doors as it was open day and night. Sainte Foy at Concas, it has a relatively short nave, side aisles, built to the full height of the nave so that there is no clear story lighting and a transept, the belfry and bell tower rises above the roof of the crossing. Cathedral Complex Pisa An imposing new cathedral dedicated to the Virgin Mary. The cathedral was designed as a cruciform basilica by the master builder Mosquitos. A long nave with double side aisles is crossed by projecting transepts designed like basilicas with their own aisles and apses. The builders added galleries above the side aisles and a dome covers the crossing. At Pisa, pilasters applied arcades and narrow galleries in white marble adorn the five-story facade. In addition to the cathedral itself, the complex eventually included a baptist tree, a campanile, and the later Gothic Campo Santo, a walled burial ground. The campanile, a freestanding bell tower, now known for obvious reason as the Leaning Tower of Pisa, was begun in 1174 by master builder Boneno Pisano, built on inadequate foundations, it began to lean almost immediately. The cylindrical tower is incest in tire upon tire of marble columns. This creative reuse of classical theme of the colonnado, turning it into a decorative arcade is characteristic of Tuscan Romanesque art. Let us now understand the concept of vaulting. Romanesque architects use the semicircular arch 
to make their building more solid and arch allows you to build unsupported openings out of masonry when this arch tunnel is used to roof a building it's called vaulting there was three sorts of vaulting popular in dominant times vaulting barrel vault the barrel vault is the simplest sort of vaulting it is just a semicircular arch stretched along a single axis the barrel vault was already in use in ancient egypt and rome and later medieval churches vaulting groin vault because of churches had several axes the groin vault was invented the groin vault is where two barrel vaults meet it vaults the intervening space with a sort of square dome the groin vault has the added bonus of setting the weight more vertically on pillars rather than horizontally on walls like barrel vaults groin vaults are very old the romans used them in their baths and their indoor markets carolingians used them in their crypts romanes architects made groin vaults even larger grander and more beautiful vaulting ribbed vault toward the end of romanes era a new form of vaulting was invented the ribbed vault unlike the groin vault which is essentially two barrel vaults meeting at the right angle with the rib vaults you are essentially building little arch frames or ribs and then filling in the gaps between them these ribs do an even better job of focusing the weight of the vaulting onto a few small places with rib walls romanes architects could make their churches wider taller and even more impressive also look at the typical romanes portal now it is important to also understand the meaning of a nave in romanes abbey cathedral basilica and church architecture the nave is main body of the church it provides the central approach to the high altar the term nave from medieval latin navis ship was probably suggested by the keel shape of its vaulting the nave of a church whether romanes gothic or classical extends from the entry which may have a separate vestibule the narthex to the chance chancel and may be flanked by lower eight aisles separated from the nave by an arcade if the aisles are high and of a width comparable to the central nave the structure is sometimes said to have three naves let us now look into romanesque regional styles burgundian romanesque some of the most splendid romanesque churches were built in the burgundy region of france under the influence of great abbey of cluny burgundian romanesque flourished 
from about 1075 to 1125 and in many ways anticipated the Gothic style. Distinctive features include tall properties, elaborate sculpture decoration, pointed arches in the barrel vaults, grouped pyres, and early forms of rib vaulting and flying buttresses. Burgundian Romanesque art is also distinctive with a majestic severity achieved by the elongation, angularity, drastic flattening, and hierarchical size at the figures and by the swirling lines of extensive drapery. The style is evident in all churches controlled by Cluny, as well as numerous churches along the pilgrimage route to Santiago de Compostela, the Santiago Cathedral itself. Cistercian Romanesque, the diametric opposite to the Burgundian Cluniac style is Cistercian Romanesque. The Austrian Cistercian order strongly disapproved of the time and money spent on decoration that would only be distraction to monks and worshippers. Cistercian abbey churches are therefore very simple with round arches, shorter ceilings, and no sculptures at all. It might be plain, but this simplicity was a beauty of its own, allowing the purity and harmony of the Romanesque architecture to shine through. Norman. The Norman style of Romanesque architecture developed almost simultaneously in the Normandy region of northern France and in England, which was conquered by the Normans in 1066. Before long, however, Anglo-Norman architecture took on characteristics of its own. While architecture back in Normandy increasingly conformed, while architecture back in Normandy increasingly conformed to the typical French Romanist style, Norman churches in England are characterized by exceptionally long plans, a massive scale, especially in a great round columns in the nave use of carved geometrical decoration. Figurative sculpture is fairly uncommon in Norman churches, but where it appears it is fascinating fusion of typical Romanesque art with Anglo-Saxon and Celtic elements. Let us now look into secular architecture of the period. Of secular buildings, the most important are castles and palaces, a fortified tower, the donjo, rectangular and circular in form, constituted the citadel, the place of refuse. As long as its defensive function dictated its form, the aesthetic had to give away to utilitarian considerations. Only after the 11th century 
were separate dwelling houses built inside the larger fortresses and then they were often decorated outside especially where the dwelling house as a prince palace was detached from the fortress and built in the open as at the gallant houses the way was open for artistic developments at in the existing remains at the gallant house in we see trefoil arch above the entrance beside groups of flat romanesque windows and there is also a romanesque gate house in the upper floor of which romanesque rose windows were probably inserted the ornamental forms applied to secular buildings were those of ecclesiastic architecture the walls were divided by plasters and by the round corbels characteristic of romanesque art dwarf arched galleries like those built inside the churches and the triforium are also seen on the outside romanesque buildings in these as in the pillars of the naves or cloisters we constantly find the romanesque cushion or cuboid capital the transition from the round shaft of the column to the square spring of the arch is affected fairly by the interpenetration of cube and sphere after the middle of the 12th century but not before it was always ornamented in some regions particularly germany large places were built for rulers and bishops local lords built great halls in the countryside while rich merchants built grand town houses in italy city councils constructed town halls while wealthy cities of the northern europe protected their trading interest with warehouses and commercial premises all over europe dwellers of the town and country built all over europe dwellers of the town and country built houses to live in some of which sturdily constructed in stone have remained to this day with sufficient of their form and details intact to give a picture of the style of domestic architecture that was in fashion at the time